the 787 will be built differently than any other airplane that Boeing has ever built. Uh, the, instead of being made from metal, it's made from carbon composites. And what we're seeing here are the, t the heads of the machines that lay down the tape. Uh, carbon tape that looks, it comes in rolls like duct tape, is rolled on, along a surface and laid flat. The carbon fiber is infused with epoxy resin. And this black material on top of this slab is what's being laid. And when they're making a fuselage, they spin a barrel. This is called a, a, a mandrel. It's, it's a cylindrical mold. And they lay the tape. There's the, the tape head machine again, laying the tape in layers one after the other as, as the mandrel spins and the fuselage takes shape. You can see it turning as the head works its way along. And so they, they, they make layers of tape, and when they've got the shape ready, they put it in a giant oven. That's what this is. It's called an autoclave. They've had to build some of the biggest autoclaves in the world for the 787 project. Uh, the one in Wichita, for example, is 30 feet in diameter, 70 feet long. They take it out, and it's baked hard. The material is black when it's not painted. So you'll see airplanes no longer having the shiny metal unpainted surface. Joining two of the fuselage pieces together. And there we have the beginning of a Dreamliner. For the first time ever, the wings of a Boeing airplane will be made overseas. Boeing developed in its research center here down on Marginal Way the method for making the wings. This is the composite skin being fitted to the to the ribs of the airplane. And this picture is in Nagoya, Japan. This is the Japanese now having fully developed the technology. The big blue cylindrical thing there, that's the oven, the autoclave. In this plant built just for the 87, the wings slide along on these automated trolleys and slide into the oven. But the very first piece, the first 787 that had to be built, was the center wing box. It's actually a part of the fuselage that holds the wings. It's built by Fuji in Japan. And here we see the first center wing box of Dreamliner number one. This part had to be redesigned later because we did some tests and found it wasn't quite strong enough. The Dreamliner will be built differently than any other Boeing airplane in that it's being assembled around the world. And the huge pieces that are delivered to the final assembly plant in Everett come in this, the Dreamlifter. It has a swing tail that opens out and a large cargo loader takes out the pieces that have come from Italy, from Japan, from South Carolina, from Kansas. Uh, Boeing calls this the DBL, the darn big loader. And here we see coming out the back the rear fuselage built by Vought in Charleston, South Carolina. And sliding out behind it in the white covering is section 41. That's the front fuselage, including the cockpit where the pilot sits, built by Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita, Kansas. Two of them are loaded on the darn big loader and taken into the factory for assembly. The idea is that eventually these pieces will come fully stuffed with all their systems. They didn't arrive that way originally when Dreamliner 1 was put together. They were empty shells. Now these are the wings arriving from Japan. Again, the swing tail of the Dreamlifter is open and the wings have come out. You'll see they're missing the, the edges at the, the leading edges and the trailing edges. And here's the largest section of all that comes in a single piece. That's coming from Charleston also, built by Glo Global Aeronautica in Charleston, South Carolina, is the entire 85-foot-long uh, mid-fuselage section. And this, from Italy, is the horizontal stabilizer, the horizontal tail. There are the wings, sort of the Japanese wings, just fitting through the doors of the, the enormous doors of the Everett assembly plant. They fit. Now once inside, they'll move these pieces together for final assembly. 
that's the centre fuselage section. You can see the place where the fairing will go around where the wing joins the fuselage. This is the very back of the 787 assembly bay. You can see this section 41 from Kansas joined to the midsection that's come from Charleston. The black composite material has a coating over it to protect it so that it has this greenish color. Here's the aft fuselage being joined, made by Vought. When Dreamliner 1 was first joined, they, they had a gap between the fuselage sections. Here are the wings coming on. Look at how slender those wings are. And now here's one of the most difficult pieces to join. It's the horizontal tail, and behind it you can see the APU, uh, the auxiliary power unit, that little cone at the back that's made in Korea. And in this piece of tooling, they will finally make join everything together. And at the very back you'll see a tower, kind of blue and gold tower, that's it there, called the mother of all tooling towers in, in Boeing's uh, affectionate jargon. And they use that to pull up the vertical fin. And you can just see the vertical fin of Dreamliner 1 being attached. That's the only piece of the airplane made by Boeing. It's made in Fredrickson near Tacoma. Here are the engines. In this case, Rolls-Royce engines sent from England to go on the first Dreamliner The landing gear, made by a French company, Messier Doughty. And with the big joins made, the plane is ready to move forward to the next position to start getting all its systems installed and connected. That's Dreamliner 1, just before the rollout two years ago. We didn't know then, but most of the systems hadn't been installed. Dreamliner 1 rolls out of the factory in 2007 to go across the 526 freeway on a bridge into the Pentagon to be painted.